Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. So, as we progress, the student understand the code also gets complex and the complexity of nesting increases. We introduce, we mimic more advanced programming concepts to make students more familiar. So the design starts increasing and the, for example, this is another. So all this is coded and as they move to more, see first, all in, we divide our levels in three. We said basic, intermediate, advanced. In basic, first we make them comfortable with HTML, CSS and to get an output. In intermediate, we introduce web animations and interactivity and increase the complexity. In advanced, what happens is that they learn how to reuse their own code. And this is the base of coding, knowing to use which instruction, which functions where. This is what it is. So overall, in this creative coding, that's what we are trying to build. So let me go back to the example. So again, I just want to show how simple we started and how complex we are going as the level progresses. This is all by our student. And you see, a lot of cognitive recognition also happens here. It's not just programming. So student also develops a structural thinking process that helps in multiple other things. So as we move forward, like this is some of our examples of a student. And you see how complex the code gets going as we progress. And even the animation. So we start iterating the animation with our students. So a lot of even the creative thinking, design thinking, all this gets increased. And in this, for example, the students is able to when we as we started with a simple four boxes, now the student understands how does boxes inside boxes and able to code this all on their own. So this is all, all about our teaching methodology. And to coming back to creative coding, so we have 10 levels. Creative coding is a base, and through this, each level has 10 uh, lessons. We have two modes that we operate. We have open mode and guided mode. In guided mode, I'll first talk about guided mode. In guided mode, we teach one lesson per one class. So, in eventually finishing 10 classes in one level, okay? Whereas in open mode, for students who are finding it a little bit hard, we take one lesson across two, three classes. We go in their own pace, okay? So, generally, our plan is that each level has 10 classes, 10 lessons, and each classes is, uh, uh, we have on, offered in alternative days, like three classes a week. Our classes are between around 45, 45 minutes, and as I told you, we have one is to one classes mm -hmm. going on. So, let me also talk to you about how our admission process works for, for questions related to that. So prior to this, we have an assistant. Okay, so first we have an, if you go to our website, we have an online application. Let's just hold one second, please. Uh, Manu, one very important, I think a lot of people have repeated the question. Yes. Uh, at what age probably the child can start learning coding? Uh, so that's a good question. So see, our student, uh, we have students as young as eight and as well okay. as 31, 32. So it really depends on individual. So that's why in our admission process, what we do is that we first have a parent interview and then we have a tech screening and a learning assessment to understand how in how the student is capable and whether he's going to be able to take it. And we also advise on what he can do to come back to our course. See, we do, there are certain foundation that is needed before prior to our course. One is that basic understanding of English because the code is going to be in English. The second is that they should have some level of computer skills, like be able to type and use the browser and Chrome. So all this thing is a necessary requirement. So Midun, I think why don't we start taking questions? I gave an overall overview of what we do. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, let me first let's uh, do a little bit of you know probing about you. So Manu, what brings you to the field? Like, you no, know, uh, how come you? Uh, I mean, uh, what's the background of yours? And a little bit of you, so that like you know, like we all can uh, connect to you as well. See, so I did my education abroad. I studied in UK, France, and Italy in robotics, mechatronics, and wireless technologies. I came back to India after my degree and I started my own company, which was an app development and software branding and design. I had clients from UK, US, and at one point I asked myself, do I just want to make money or do I want to something, do something more? So I got into tech education. We started working with different parts of the community and got, and we got really good at that. And regarding how I got into in the, the individuals were differently able is that one of my own clients, her daughter was individual with autism. So we started 
that's how it started all you know all right so what are, what was your challenges like you know i think a lot of our parents are uh, i think at least one of them i mean at least like you know most of them are from the industry uh, or some have worked in software professions and all right so uh, i mean uh, so when when we put this webinar a lot of the parents they said that i have tried teaching coding to my child see i but think didn't really of, take off yeah, oh, right? so i think one of the primary thing is our own thinking process is also plays when right. i when i had my first student right his name was prem i hardly had idea about what autism was okay and i never looked into what autism is and that's i think the reason of our success also right we always we don't look at an individual we are not differentiating them we're just looking at them as an individual as they are and you know our core philosophy where everyone learns differently and you know able to understand their learning style and catering to that has been our success so to be honest i've not felt i not dealt with any difficulty because i was always taken as a challenge and and more of it's not even i wouldn't even say a challenge i think this open mindset has enabled us to success and to coming to the point where you know i know a lot of parents who are programmers who try teaching programming to their son and child and it's failed so the reason why i think we are success we are able to have success is that see programming is just like a language right if you teach too much grammar what happens you will lose interest and the way we have done is that we are not really teaching here we are more like co-learning co-working with them to be able to create see it's all interactive learning right it's an immersive learning is what we are trying to create and that is the main reason of our success okay i think kiran has asked a question that you know how do you cope up with the uh, cognitive challenges uh, that you know the kids pose when the difficulty improves so like i said right uh, we have two modes open mode and guided mode in open mode so we understand we everything is graded and our courses in our lessons are in a way that each lesson builds on the previous lesson and we also tell the so there's always a open discussion going with the parents you know talking about where we can improve together it's a journey right nobody has a fixed answer each individual is different so it goes on to that okay yeah and uh, one more thing is like you know something that i also felt uh, like uh, see when you're teaching you're teaching mostly teaching them through online one on one session right yes yeah so a lot of i mean the kids that we work with the inside also have difficulty in terms of sitting taller I mean, they're not very comfortable uh probably like if they are comfortable sitting in a class i mean if it's they don't have to do any activity but the moment they are uh, like you know asked to do an activity in the class they are generally very reluctant to do the activity even if it's an online session so how do you ensure that engagement you have on an online session with these kids yes i'm glad you asked that question see actually you know level 1 really focus i am a strong believer that if someone is not interested in learning you cannot take them they will not be able to learn for it our entire levels our entire classes lessons everything is built on curating the interest for them to learn and you know through our course there are students who did not have sitting tolerance who have developed so much sitting tolerance there are students who parents who did not even think their kid will be able to use multiple key press are doing now so as i said it's not just programming that we're teaching we're teaching multiple things together and talking about online learning right now see online learning is actually been very surprising and for us is working really well you know i've been getting a lot of this thing where online learning is not working for us it's been wonderful because it's more of them learning so basically we see the screen like how you're seeing and we guide them okay so for them also is enable and see end of the day we are trying to push them towards a digital workforce so this place really really good it sets a pace and we have students yes. from all different cognitive abilities who have and everyone has been able to succeed so far awesome that's great yeah uh, correct so i mean i have a different perspective like i last manu said you know actually the world is becoming autistic because uh, something that's about people in the spectrum or adhd is that they don't they're not really comfortable going out or interacting with others so this concepts of work from home or you know like online classes are actually more friendly to them so we have seen incidents where children who are actually excluded in classrooms are included in uh, online classrooms right so i mean so the world is becoming autistic not the other way around so i think uh, they're much more adaptable to this yes i like uh, to yeah. add a point to that also midun sure, see sure. one of the things that i would like to say say on you know i think it's important for everybody to be treated equally and you know have the same respect and individual and when it comes right. online right i know my mentors we don't see that each it's it levels the playing ground nobody no, nobody thinks he's a person with autism he's a person with that you know it's exactly. just seeing a person who's doing work and i think that is the most important factor and moreover in this economy moving forward 
the ability to learn, decide what you want to do is very important and no job is guaranteed. We all know that. And you know, if somebody loses a job, what happens later? So developing a skill set and being using, I think it really levels, the, it brings equality to everybody through online. Nice. Uh, Roshni has a question. Uh, uh, she volunteers for a STEM education related to nonprofit. Any tips for teaching about circuity concepts like paper circuit or basics of e-wearables? I'm sorry, I didn't even follow your question. Can you see the uh, I can see the chat. Uh, I, uh, okay, I will just see the chat. Okay. Uh, Roshni, Roshni said. Uh, so circuit concepts of paper circuit or basics of e-wearables I'm sorry, I don't have much to say on that. <laughs> I think we should have a, I should, I need to understand a little bit more on what you're doing. So Roshni, maybe you can contact me separately so I can be able to get a better understanding of what you're doing and then I can give you much more. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and another thing I think a lot of parents are asking is about the employability, but I, I get the perspective that you're working with. So you can probably address that. See, uh, talking about employability, right? That's why I said, as I started this first, uh this uh, webinar at first is that we are trying to see we're trying to build a skill set a skill set that they can value it for now when you're talking about individuals with you know cognitive different ability most of them had either as a vocational job or if they go into it most of them are tried uh data entry but data entry is is mundane this is not money since it's a repeated task again and again and if you go to graphic designing creativity is opinionated on everybody your a good design is different from me and you. Whereas programming, in a sense, your skill set cannot be denied. And we believe that if a skill is highly, if a, if we can make an individual highly skilled, they can be recognized for the talent they uh, they have, and accordingly create a career. That's what we want to do. We want to create highly skilled individuals who can be valued, and that's that will what will help to develop. Because see, end of I think we had a lot of uh, workshops in Chennai. We had this professionals career workshop where we invited a professional and we had a lot of discussions, you know. One of the things that I really focus on, you know, many of the things that going towards uh, individuals with neurodiversity and career is most of them are going through CSR. We are not focusing on CSR. We are focusing on individuals who are skilled and be valued and give. that's exactly what, because that is a long-term sustainable model. Right. Uh, so, I mean, so from, from your past students, what are generally the, uh, opportunities or things that they pursue after the course that See, may probably have to I do think with you. Each individual is different. So, uh, you mm -hmm. know, each individual mm -hmm. has their unique capabilities. And what we are trying to prep, I will tell you what generally what we are trying to prep for them. So, we are teaching them HTML, CSS, right, through that. And see, we have, let me also walk through back again the course structure. So, first, we start with our foundational course. And that is term one, creative coding, which they are based, which, which are the fundamentals of HTML, CSS, which, and after this term one, they can take a professional project, like a professional course, which is project-based learning, where they can do, decide, they have two options. They can take a professional project, which is more focused towards web designing, or learn the more advanced concepts, like such as JavaScript, which opens more areas for them. So some of the core, sectors that we are trying to enable our student is one is user interface programming second is data visualization and augmented reality as well as virtual reality so all this html css javascript is there but each individual is unique in their own way so throughout this course we'll be able to identify and according to that we'll be able to create projects that they can offer as microservices later and awesome. another yeah. thing <laughs> within, i also need to add is that education is not a especially tech exactly. education is not a one-time thing it's a continuous thing you have to keep updating yourself you have to, learning is a continuous process you first believe that is a one-time process it's not a one-time process it is a continuous process even if they learn they see i think you know you look like even the concept of college education is the self is changing now many of us are learning in work and then we are relearning and updating ourselves so that is what we are trying to focus towards our students also okay nice um you want to continue something with the presentation that you had manu uh i'm pretty much done so i thought i was open to have an interaction kind of right. uh, sure sure uh yeah i think there is one parent who has a question uh, mm -hmm. i am a parent and was working in software before my son was diagnosed with autism mm -hmm. i would like to teach computers to kids with special needs i feel they are more attracted to graphics and visually appealing software 
than coding. Can you please address how to help the kids get interested in coding? Also, any other basic sites in which they can refer to? See, that's what we are doing, right? We are teaching coding right. through visual creative coding. So, I said, like, everybody is a visual learner, not only individuals with autism. That's the truth. And talking about graphic design, the thing that I have is graphic designing, you're teaching them a particular user interface. And user interface gets updated very quickly, more than the tech gets updated. At least here, the overall concept is the same. So talking about introducing your children to programming, so this is what we have done. We have used creative patterns like this and built on that. So it's all about curating mm -hmm. interests in what they like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so some parent asked a question, what are the prerequisites that you look for before selecting a child for the program? So uh, let me go back to the admission process, what we have. So the prerequisites, we have an assessment prior to all this. Okay. And in that, we have a tech screening and learning assessment. One of the things, see, we believe, we are, so I think a lot of parents have built a foundation and the question comes, what to do next? That's where we come into place. So we do, the prerequisite is uh, English knowledge, some familiarity with typing and computers, but not, I don't, we don't need, we don't require any prior knowledge in programming, I can say. All right. Nice. Um, yeah. And uh, is there any trial paid version of the talk? I think you're asking about coaching, I guess. <laughs> yes. For, uh, okay, let me also. So we have, so our assessment is basically nothing is our first class. So we introduce the first concept and then we see, and like, what was the question, Medu? Okay. <laughs> Uh, is there a trial paid version of the software? I think they are trying to ask about whether they can teach some skills as a parent before they put you for the program. We have our own curriculum as part of that. So it's more of mentoring based. We're not, we have an app, but it's used for our own teaching. Okay. Right. Right. Awesome. And, uh, I mean, uh, so just a, I mean, curious question, like, you know, what are generally, like, probably you would have uh, trained few kids. So what are the general. I mean, like, you know, probably from start to end, what are the changes that you observed in that children? Like, you know, probably they had some difficulties and towards the end, they actually got very curious about it. So what are the generally the trends that you've seen in uh, working with these kids? So one of the things that I've been amazed is, right, the way the students, see, basically what we are building is that we're building a structural thinking process, right? See, being able to, end of the day, we're able to I, enable our students to have a problem solving skill. When they see a four box here, they're ideating that they need four div sets here. You get it? And that has been really good. And as the student progress throughout the level, they are able to, the, the thinking process is more structured, it's more clear, and they're able to ideate exactly on, see for example here, this example particular one, that is inside a circle, there's a semicircle, and each student knows how to do this, and they know how many rows are there, how many circles are there, and how, so they become more structured. And that helps in many ways. See, Programming builds a very good problem solving skill. That is what we need. Because end of the day, when we are working independently or doing anything, to be able to identify first what your problem statement is and then break down your solution step by step is a clear way to go ahead to solve it. Awesome, awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and what about children with uh, ADHD, like a hyperactive child who has a very low attention span, right? Uh, which is an entirely different challenge to somebody with autism. Yesterday, one parent had asked me this question. Is it for children with autism or is it not for children with ADHD? See, right? we have students with ADHD, ADHD like also. That. See, like I said, okay. right, everything comes with your interest. If you have the interest to sit and do it, you will do it. And we, our classes are also 45 minutes kept on that time. So they are interested. So like I told you, right, one of the students who joined an eight-year-old ADHD, he is able to do it. That's because we are curious. See, it's, we are not teaching you anything. We are making them do it on, as they do their learning. So that's where it gets interesting. All these colors, everything is chosen by them. So it builds on from that. Mm -hmm. uh, what if they, I mean, like, you know, suddenly exhibit a behavior during the class, like, you know, they're violent or they don't, so not we have an assessment. So one of the things that now, okay. we, in Chennai, we have the physical classes. So in assessment, there is a prerequisite about the behavior. So we are tech education. We know where our line, so, that is a pre So all that is, so that's what we see, right? During the assessment, we cleared that out. If that is a possible, so we need some level of sitting tolerance that is there prior to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in the assessment, mm -hmm. we understand the learning center. So we will be openly enough to tell you that whether this is, they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to learn or oh. they need some more time to, you know, 
to learn. Yeah. We have mm-hmm. this prerequisite to sit and learn this. Okay. So there is some questions about what is the fees for the program? What is the duration for the program? Number of sessions? I think probably these are basic things you can just address as part of. Okay. So like I said, right, uh, in the creative coding, the term one foundation course, we have 10 levels and each uh, level has 10 lessons. So we charge on 10 classes, which we charge 8,500 rupees. Each class is around 45 minutes, it's twice a week. 10 classes? 45 minutes, around 45 minutes. Each session is 45 minutes and we have 10 classes. 10 minutes. Each class one. Okay. okay. Any other questions? If they... uh, I mean, parents, you're free to unmute and if anybody is there, you want to ask a question, you can unmute and talk. It's not the same guy, only I have to ask a question. Feel free to, yeah. Hi, I just wanted to ask as uh, in one section uh, you had said that you have that open learning mode also, wherein the child is not, if in case he's not able to understand the topic in one session, so you might take three or four sessions for until the child understands mm-hmm. that particular topic or heading. Okay, so in that case, how do you go about the fee structure? Uh, will it be increased uh, per session accordingly, and how or how wise? Okay, so let me so what let me also talk about our lessons before I address that. So each lesson builds on a topic prior to that. Okay, so overall level one, we have certain concepts that we need to master before they move to level two. So what we do is that we charge per basically per session eight fifty is what we're charging. So ten classes, eight thousand five hundred rupees is coming to. So we will bill you on every ten classes, and even in open mode, we will try to make sure the student completes in twenty classes. As it it's not. So it's basically. It, Yes. And see, in open mode also, what happens is that we might also deviate from the lesson plan also. In case if the student is struggling certain concepts, we might give more exercises on that for them to understand. See, one of the things that it's not just programming that we're teaching. There's a lot of also cognitive thinking and logical reasoning skills. So more practice on that. And we'll also tell the parents to also what is needed and so that they can also work along with that. Thank you. Okay. Hello, hi. Are you able to hear me? This is Venkat here. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So my first question, uh, Manu, is, uh, you know, uh, is there any certification that you would give at the end of this course? Yes. Right. Good. So yes, actually, what happens is that the tenth uh, lesson, that is the tenth class of every level, they build a badge for their own certificate. And yes, we do have a certificate, but I would like to add a point that while we are giving certificate, based on assessment, do you provide an assessment or a test for the students? Before no, we are it? we kept it open, so we're not burning burning the students. For us, what happens is the creative coding, at least the foundation, right? It's about them learning in their own pace, and also like if you when I started this conversation. As I mentioned, more than a certificate, it's a skill set that matters. So this is where a professional courses comes in. So professional courses are project based, where we enable to help students exhibit their skill set. Through that, they can offer that as a microservice. So we're focusing more on showcasing your skill sets and projects online. While we do provide a certificate, but that is not our core focus. It's more on a skill set to be able to help the student to show. It. Right. Yeah. See, typically any any uh, you know coaching program or training or anything like that, right? For ten classes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so for ten class. If you look at look at that, how will I know? See, one way is if it is if it is going to be delivery from your side, you could just give the ten classes and provide a certificate, right? But that certificate will not have the weight or the value unless it is backed by the next question that comes is. How tough was the assessment? How many people took See, that? That how the real world actually looks at these metrics. Right? Exactly. So that's the thing, right? Now you're thinking from a job point perspective, how yeah, the yes. employer is gonna go on it. Now right. we are I'm talking about a different digital era where if you see a programmer, there is something called JTUB. Okay, I'm just going to open it in my website. Okay, most of our programmers, we we work on a lot of these open yeah, projects. Yeah, so yeah. it's your skill set. So see, our foundation course, for, we don't want to put the pressure of assessment in our foundation course. In right. our professional right. course, our students are built so they can showcase their skills. Again, in this digital era, moving forward towards a freelance economy, it's not your certificate, it's not your assessment that's going to matter. It's going to matter whether you're going to be capable of doing the work or not. Exactly. Really enable. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We call this the gig economy. 
Yes, right? exactly. The gig economy. <laughs> GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we did. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, one more doubt. So, I mean, like a lot of the kids that I know basically. Yes, madam. Uh, hello, one second. Man. Does another parent have a question, Madhu? Uh, I'm, I'm facing some technical issues. One second. Yes. Uh, hi, Manu. Uh, hi. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Manjunath, yes. and uh, I have a question to you. So uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, barriers when we talk to inclusion. Mm -hmm. So one such barrier I feel is we start to feel that, you know, coding is not for me. Uh, there are also... Uh, maybe I belong to that sort of a category where, you know, coding just doesn't, uh, uh, you know, I don't think I can learn coding. Uh, is, is there, is it just a, a mental barrier that we place or uh, is there a way, different way I can look at it as a student? Yes. So if you think coding doesn't belong to you, maybe it's mostly people who are think that is very complex. Everybody makes coding looks as, I think many of the students' patterns that they I I've come across, I was also Programming is very difficult. Programming is very hard. But programming is not difficult. It's not hard. It's just all set of instructions. If you know how to give a set of instructions, you'll be able to get output. That's what we are trying to do, right? We are demystifying. So, like I said, first and foremost, to curate an interest to learn. And we are learning based on experience. So, what happens is we, in an incremental level, we build your confidence. So, as you achieve your output, right, you're able to know that, okay, for example, if, you see, if you're able to see my screen, as they able to get this output, they're building the confidence that, okay, I can achieve that. So breaking that barrier step by step. All right. Yeah. Thanks for answering that. Uh, I have a follow-up question to mm -hmm. say uh, to the same thing. Uh, if you may allow, can I go ahead Please. with that? All right. Uh, so there's also a lot of this uh, stress on the school systems. So there's a lot of assessment um, assessments that go on, you know, try, uh, which where the schools try to stay relevant. What I liked about hashtag code is I was just looking up your website mm -hmm. and you also emphasize that you're not going to uh, stress on the assessment part. Um, but can, uh, have you made any attempts to uh, promote this uh, at the school level uh, where, you know, you encourage schools to take up coding and, uh, you know, you encourage them as just as an, uh, you know, an additional opportunity for learners to go ahead and explore if they want to do that because yeah. there's no pressure of assessment there yes so let me first talk about uh, assessment also the reason why we don't put pressure on assessment is that at the end of the day we're trying to make individuals who like what they're doing and want to take it up that is the core focus right not to push someone to do something and otherwise you will not learn neither will you advance every single student of us is looking forward to the next class and i think that is the success and coming to the school level, we have worked with, uh, we had multiple summer camps and things like that with the school children also. Definitely, we will be expanding. Right now, we are focusing more towards individuals who are neurodiverse and creating an opportunity. And then later, we will look at expanding to yeah. more bigger horizons. Um, uh, Manu, can you also talk a little bit about full spectrum? I think a lot of parents would be very interested in what full spectrum is as a moment and all those things. What do you mean? I'm sorry. Can you expand on that? Full spectrum. I mean, I, I your hashtag code is part of full spectrum, right? You're basically uh, enabling individuals to work in companies which are hiring uh, children with autism, right? So actually, we are trying to build skills. Individuals, we're not enabling <laughs> companies. Like, see, actually, I have a different... No, 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 not about companies. I mean, I saw on your website that you put about saying that uh, your organization is part of full spectrum. Uh, full spectrum. Oh, that is the thing that we're also working... See, one of, like I said, right, right? Yeah. yes, I'll definitely talk about that. So one of the things that we also focus is that we, build, we believe in building a community. Okay. Right. And towards us. So what like in regularly in Chennai, we had this careers in tech event where we see many in the, many companies, many individuals do not have awareness about what autism or even who have different capable, different cognitive abilities. You know, there's a lot of job opportunities for, you know, differently uh, physically challenged, but not for different cognitively challenged. So we wanted to create that awareness. So what we did is we invited parents and, you know, 
as well as com uh, professionals to talk and create to start conversations that can help and through our, through from that conversation led to the full spectrum where we thought creating a set of partner companies so even when i'm talking about our professional projects right so we have enabled we are going to enable a lot of companies along this so as going part and so they can take chance and even have small internship or things like this working towards creating a more of an uh, uh, what do you call it? a partner community network to build towards that awesome that's awesome that's really good so i hope at least some of the parents here can refer their companies to manu to uh, you know make them also part of the full spectrum movement i think uh, it's all of as parents and as educators that you know we are the ones who should be uh, putting a foot on our companies and telling them that you know uh, you know neurodiversity should also be part of the organization yes and also the lot with the other thing that yeah. i also had like many parents or like when when we had the careers in tech event right they wanted child or they wanted see i don't believe going and working in a corporate environment it is it really? is not setting for us it's not going to fit for anybody okay and the reason why i'm really pushing towards freelance economy or gig economy which are like build the skill set let them get the project that they want to work even there's remote workers also 2 3 hours 4 hours nobody's going to work more than 4 or 5 hours effectively so i think opening that options will also many of us you know like maybe the environment does not work for them then working in an environment this is not even sheltered environment it's working in an environment that they are comfortable and providing quality work that is what we really want to push towards and like i said in the beginning our focus is not towards when we talk about career we may talk about workplace many people look towards csr and sympathy we are not going in that direction at all skilled individuals awesome. value them for what they are mm mm-hmm. mm yeah i mean even inside at the similar journey so we were i mean we are not a not for profit so a lot of people ask us the same question like you know why you are not for profit so we tell you know if you're working on an impact you're working to create something then you create a value out of it that's it so and uh, that value is the business right so yeah. that makes sense yeah um all right any other parents have any other questions uh, for manu like uh, i mean i'll definitely share all the contact details uh, of the program and all those things but... manu uh, manu one more question from my side manu sir yes venkat sir uh, so manu uh, this is a question about see after the first 10 classes right mm-hmm. will there be a break or if you want to go for the next block of 10 classes what is, what is the, do you have a start date end date module kind of thing or it's free flowing so basically it is free flowing but i do recommend you take it immediately especially after level 1 and level 2 because level 1 basically introduces them to html css and level 2 where we start modularizing the code so as far as i can recommend going at a stretch is a better way but if you need to take a step we need to take a break we are accommodative to that so that's my question so do you have a, a period like a semester kind of a thing scheduled dates it's an uh, unrolling basis that's what we do but in a okay. month also i need to mention that we also take only limited students in a month because we are all one is to one so like for example this july admission we are planning to take only around five students so it is a limited number of students that we take every instead of going in quantity we have to believe in quality no i agree you see i my my children i have twin children right both mm-hmm. of them on the mm-hmm. now whenever they take classes right the first 10 classes go towards rapport building with the teacher yes. whether it's an inclusive school whether it is music whether it is creative writing i have exposed them to various kind of trainings online trainings especially in the last 3 4 months right what i have seen is that 10 classes will go only towards rapport building they should like they should not run away they should stick to the screen and all those things right see you know so, in our class there is no rapper building because what happens is that there's we're not even sharing our videos end of the day we are only seeing their screen and it's all our students get excited of our class because they're able to design and the output is coming and it's more like a game based learning kind of a thing that we are building in so from num from class 1 itself they get hooked our our entire the first level at least it's to get them hooked to coding so that they want to learn more and that is exactly what's been happening with all our students so far so what will is what will be the before after kind of thing so before they don't know anything about coding so after 10 classes will they be for example they able to write a small html code what should we expect so the that's the thing right so before see like i said right one of the things that this for 
foundational course that creative coding the 10 levels that we are talking about right the most important thing that we want to try to build is that yes we are teaching them html css but we're not teaching them html css in a traditional sense of web designing we're teaching them html css in a way that you know that builds their computational thinking process that sets the foundation for them to learn more advanced concepts or to go in a professional one of the most important thing in programming is right programming you know somebody asked me a question what is programming and most people answer programming saying it is a language that a computer can understand whereas my definition is that it is not a language it is a set of instructions that you give a computer to get an output so knowing which code to use for for here for example this is our level 9 ex course okay the student understands how to copy and paste which code within each one and change the code accordingly you see that ability to be able to figure out where which goes where that goes a long way and through that, they can keep advancing themselves. Okay, sure. So after the first 10 classes, it's up to us. We can take a break of about a month or so, then again rejoin, again take I a break. I definitely would not recommend a month break after the first 10 classes. I do recommend having level one, level two continuously back to go because it does in our course, there's a lot of learning, relearning, unlearning. It keeps going like that. So, and moreover, if it, I would, at the most, I would definitely recommend students not to have a break and go with a stretch because it is, practice makes perfect, right? And the second thing also I would like to add to this is that, see, we have, we've seen for in a, in a span of a year, we've seen a lot of different students and we've seen where students shows more successes when the parents is also co-learning. We also encourage our parents to be part of the session. Okay. The reason is that the parent will be, see, end of the day, our learning methodology is very different. We are not, we are trying to create, we are trying to curate the interest, right? So the, when the parent is active and seeing what the kid is doing and encouraging them plays a lot of a success in the student. Yeah, Manu, I, I get that. See, uh, a, a follow up question for on that. Mm -hmm. uh, see, see, I, I was thinking something that my train of thought got interested. Uh, if you look at uh, a, a set of 10 classes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so after that, you are saying break is recommended or break is not recommended? Not recommended. I don't recommend it. I go. I would definitely level one, level two without a break is the best way to go forward. Uh, hi, okay. Manu. This is Mani. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hi. Can uh, others mute their mic, please? Uh, yes, please, sir. Go ahead, Mani. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I just have a quick. I understand your pro, uh, how your plan is. Like, there's a basic module, there's an intermediate module, and there is an advanced module. Mm -hmm. Okay, means they are that is, and so I think so. I do clearly understand that when the child is doing basic one, two, three levels have to be done consecutively, continuously, mm -hmm. and then mind will break of that. I understand, yes. Okay, uh, my concern here happens to be mm -hmm. that uh, you know, since the last two, three years, there have been many things coming up. Uh, not in pertaining to coding, mm -hmm. okay, but uh, computer courses as such, wherein different aspects have been done. And my son has already done a, some course like this, mm -hmm. okay, which is not into coding, but it was into graphic designing and multimedia yes. mm -hmm. and things, okay. And uh, he has finished that, he has got the certification, mm -hmm. but at the same time, okay, uh, the thing is that after that, what, okay. Uh, in the sense that uh, they also said that they also have an advanced level wherein it's a two years project based thing, but they said that at present the child needs more practice and all that. Okay, uh, I really appreciate that you that the co learning of parents that you have said, which was one of the key things that I feel my son was able to complete this course because I was also learning beside with him and I could follow up the things, sessions that were done, practical practicality at home. Okay. But uh, what would be the high end means, you know, the end result I, of this? I understand your I question. Yes, exactly. See, that's the thing, right? Now, let me also expand on co-learning. The co-learning also I expand. I, I don't think at one point the student should be able to be independent. If you see, uh, I'll give you an example of one of our students. His parent was there till level five level six till level five and after level six onwards the student was very independent of doing all of them now the key to be able to for any individual to do something we need to promote independence right 
and from a1 that's what we are promoting it. see this foundation course right what we're doing see like i said tech keeps changing tech keeps updating they need to keep updating themselves but one is to one yes. mentoring is not going to work towards at one point they should be able to have self paced learning also correct so True. that is what we are really building towards that mindset to be able to you know work learn independently to be able to consume information to be able to assess your mistake these are all key factors to be for someone to you know do anything to produ- to pro- to create to pro- so, make out uh, so, sorry i in for interfering no, uh, for okay uh, see with the an child who is who has autism mm-hmm. uh, especially in uh, in concern with my child okay mm-hmm. is uh, brilliant with computers in the sense he's grasp things very well okay like he had uh, learned photoshop he can manipulate it he can copy whatever has been told within a session he has learned whatever steps have been known and he's able to follow through mm-hmm. but what actually comes it uh, like you said that creativity aspect is not there okay so in coding like what you have doing is coding is they have some patterns to follow and all till that time that is there i am sure that my son will be able to follow that okay because he is he has good at it okay he mm-hmm. can do uh, okay. but uh, because coding also uh, when we go into the advanced things out okay wherein the child has to think about himself and do himself you know in the sense yes, see, that that's, he can yeah yes such is a question i get your question so that's what i'm trying to say that so the way we are mimicking that like as i said right coding is not coding is there's a lot of things in programming there's front end there's back end development there's software app development i know because there i am is. from that line itself so, okay, okay. i didn't pursue it with you uh, yes, my son i just for the patterns or also wondering about what software like programming you have two main there you have front end development and a back end development front end development where you do anything related to user interface and what you see on the screen back end is where all the application mm-hmm. logic goes in okay so to all these 10 that's 10 to all the foundation courses right we observe what they doing and our question is how is he able to going to be able to relate what he's doing to the patterns to an actual process that's what i'm saying right the patterns that we are doing is very complex and what is programming is all about knowing which functions and logics to use and we're mimicking it through all this so they understand that and then you know professional project based learning right we relate whatever they learn here to that even this project for example what we do is are we make our student use the prior project refer to that and be able to do this one okay so we are catering to that and that's what we are exactly the end, see uh, my entire the foundation course what we are trying to do is we giving a more holistic we not narrowing down to a particular task like for, for example in photoshop they'll just teach you how to use a marquee tool and how to cut snip it or crop it we not doing that we are giving them more of an overall holistic approach that can fit and you know help them to do it on their own that is the core here okay. that we are trying to set address oh, uh, could you expand a little bit on the professional course also that you have written in the series too yes the so the professional allow- course right see it depends on different individuals so what is going to happen is that right now what we have at least once we finish we have different uh, foundation courses okay what is creative coding after creative coding they have the option to take a professional course that is web designing where they learn about uh let's say we give them some templates and they learn how to edit that template and offer that as a microservices and then they can come back to take the advanced creative coding where we teach javascript once they learn javascript the option opens up for them they can go into data visualization even app development or data science any of these things so our professional courses are going to be project based for that individual we will create a project each project will be linked to a microservice that they can offer as a service on their own later so it really depends on individual and also the duration also depends on the individual it's very personalized for them uh, thank you and uh, just one more thing uh, could you provide i have noted out your email id and your website mm-hmm. so your website any person because uh, see i have many more queries i don't want to okay, uh, it's so there on the ahead. chat madam yeah. i already posted it in yes. the chat and also this mail will be sent to you with all the details yes oh that would be great and also in our website you have a request to call back so you can just fill in the details i think it's somewhere here uh yeah request call back and we'll call you back oh that would that's a great sounds a good that's really great thank, thank you. you manu uh, uh, manu uh, i just have a quick question see 
after taking this course creative coding course mm-hmm. can you give me an instance where somebody went into a professional kind of programming so, or as i stated that this has been a one year journey for us so most of our students are coming to that level only now so okay. and i told the parents who started out you know i tell to every people that this is a journey so when they start i think in the next two three months you'll start hearing more of our success stories going forward oh okay sure great thank you thank you hi manu i'm kirti i'm calling from delhi yes so uh, can you hear me yes i can hear you please go on i just wanted to ask you one thing i missed the initial uh, presentation mm-hmm. is it a remote learning or is it a physical classroom that uh, the course is going to be conducted in so it's online learning so initially we had we have a center in chennai also but we thanks actually thanks to corona we started online learning and it's been really great and that's yeah. actually good because you know the as i was stating in the beginning of the session that all our students we are trying to focus on a digital workforce our student uses multiple they use multiple tab they know how to go back and forth prepping them for the future professional making them professional mm-hmm. ready so it's fully online oh thank you and so much we also have our own app through that we guide our students so we see our screen like for example here as you see and through that we learn so it has no classroom base is all instructional and you know like experiential based learning better term is immersive i would say okay thank you so much you. yes manu can you give us an example of how the flow in a typical class would be for example is it you manu who would be handling so one on one or be one to many we have our mentors all our classes is one is to one okay all our mentors are it based professionals and like i said right our question basically the, the students will be sharing the screen and then we have a whiteboard in that we show them the design based on the design they will anticipate so we go on output based learning so they will try to reverse engineer what is needed and then accordingly go ahead with it any other questions madam from any other parents i'm just waiting uh, any other parents or any other questions or uh, anybody like you know when when are you getting this to bangalore that's my question i think now we are going <laughs> online so we are completely full focus on it i'm like we will definitely push towards more and we also started yeah. international students so that's so it's okay. completely online is what we are planning for us Yeah, Panisa, you can speak in Tamil. Your all languages are welcome here. Can you hear me? Yes, definitely. Yes, I can hear you. Please hear me. Uh, I'm Jaya Sudhakar from Hyderabad. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please ask a question. Uh, sir, uh, actually, I had registered for this, but unfortunately, I didn't get uh, a link for it. I got it through a friend and joined. You know. Okay. So, uh, uh, like. we are very eager to join uh, for my son mm-hmm. he's 24 and uh, asperger's uh, syndrome he's done his bca mm-hmm. but unfortunately i'll explain that to you later uh, i feel he needs he's more in need of a mentor and all you know yes for, uh, so actually, what i would suggest so, is that if you can fill out yeah. online application form available in our website ashako.com okay. and then we'll have a call with you to talk further and understand Yes, certainly. Huh? I I wanted to know the first step. That is, yes. In the the online application is on your web yes. website. Yes. This right? is our website. If you can see the link here. Uh, Hashhackcode dot com. Yes, that's the website. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Sir. It's actually very exciting. Like what you say. Uh, like you know, I just I'm just hoping that because he is. Uh, I'll tell you about his learning pattern later. As definitely. Yes. So. Uh, so i'm just hoping that it will lead him on to a good career like later on you know like uh, definitely uh, thank you so much thank yeah you. for a very uh, insightful session thank you so much manu uh, okay. final question from my side manu yes. mm-hmm. so i i missed the initial part of the session so if you could tell me what motivated you to do this oh so So I think did you hear about my background also? I think that was a lot of. No, so, sorry, I did not. Okay. I, I I didn't want to ask that. Okay. So that's another question. Okay, so actually, so I did my education abroad in UK, France, in Italy, in robotics and wireless technologies. 
And then I came back to India. I started my own company. We had clients. We went to software development, branding, and all these things. From I had clients from UK, Middle East, US. And at one point, I was asking myself the question: Is it just about making money, or is doing something more towards the community? Which led me into into tech education because I believe you know programming levels the field. Just like how English is a skill set that was that enabled me to be success. Just like that, programming will enable whether you're a programmer or not. Knowing to programming has a lot of benefits. So we got into tech education. We work with uh, women from marginalized background. We started teaching them programming, hiring them in our own company, and then. and we taught programming to girls who cannot hear and speak so this went on like this and then one of my clients daughter was autistic so they had a event mm-hmm. on career uh, for individuals with autism in chennai like last june sometime around this uh, this I month on last year and then a couple of parents wanted to start they asked me and i didn't have any idea about what i had a vague idea about what autism autism was and i didn't go into I, further also because see my whole belief is that every individual is unique and thanks to that that has catered me to be able to you know even till to this day, till to this date i never really googled how to teach anybody with special needs or nothing i it's all been on our experience and our understanding you know that's what on so that's how this started basically yeah um is there any other questions we'll take one last question i think 615 already so probably we'll take one last question anybody has a question impatient how impatient people are right because uh, teaching my children it takes a toll on us right because you expect that figure you expect them to grasp everything fast and then there are distractions so the wiring is very different so, yes but see i that's the thing right we believe everybody learns differently mm-hmm. and we have a lot of patience and patience is a key right and moreover i think seeing someone to understand and be we have a student okay is in the lower sort of spectrum and him able to when he was sitting he, i i can see his journey from where he started and now he's a, he's sitting and doing so many things you know and everybody deserves the I opportunity sorry, I the last sentence can you please repeat the last so sentence so we had a student who was in the lower sort of spectrum and you know <laughs> he was not even so much familiar and he was more towards vocational things that he was pushed and he came to us he started he was one of our first he was a first student actually and his journey particularly where he started and where he is now and everybody deserves that opportunity i know yeah. your voice is pausing i think or it's my issue okay i'm sorry my voice so basically everybody this is the opportunity that's what i was trying to say okay with the um, voice still yeah. breaking or is it okay thank you manu thanks a lot for joining thank us today manu uh, one more thing i would like to add so yeah, uh, sure. everybody so to celebrate our one year of anniversary we are creating a free ebook and i will share that to midun and he will share to all of you guys hey again your post i don't know probably some problem with your audio i guess okay So one second, man. Okay, man. So one. I just wait till one year. Then we can so probably one, start. Yes, I will start. So to celebrate our one year, what we do? We can hear you. You can hear me. Great. Okay. Okay. So I think everybody is able to hear me. So maybe there's something on your side. I don't know. Oh, is it okay? okay. okay. So to celebrate no one year, we are developing a free ebook that I will share. It's about uh, keyboard shortcuts. So I'll share that with you. Please do share it with all of the participants today. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think you would be getting the recording on your system because you have recorded it, right? Definitely. I'll so probably you need to upload in YouTube or something and then share it back. To you. I will share that with you, Madam. Definitely. Yes, thank you, Madam, for having me today. Yeah. uh thanks a lot manu and appreciate your efforts it's much required in the field and i mean uh, i think last week we got somebody who are uh, creating you know tactile based uh, products for children with special needs so i think you know uh, the youth are the number one innovators in terms of bringing out technology and making the world inclusive uh, even if you take sustainability or any other world goal for that matter uh, youth is the main force which you know puts new efforts or comes with new innovations so appreciate your efforts in the direction and all the best for your endeavors and uh, for anything you know like you know if you want if you are expanding to bangalore or uh, want uh, you know coming here you do let us know uh, we'll be free to host you here uh, all right uh, and for our plans like uh, we'll keep you posted about the next webinar uh, for some reason some mails got bounced back i have to check why that mail bounce had happened i'm sorry about it uh, but i've tried to resend the mails again uh, when the webinar started for everyone 
uh, thanks a lot thank you guys for attending and uh, you have been wonderful parents and uh, teachers who been part of this session um see you next time bye thank you thank you great bye bye thank you uh, manu yes i will switch it off <laughs> yeah i think you are to uh, close yeah, this i am ending the meeting